So the one um, thing I really like to do is look at different examples. Um, there's no way for me to quiz you on this, so just relax. Um, but, you know, when you think of where your food products or different things come from, it's um, usually we, we don't even know what, what that plant looks like. And um, the black pepper plant is really interesting because it puts off this... Um, it has flowers that look, I don't know if you can see here, that are kind of hanging off in this little strand, really tiny flowers, and that's where the um, where the fruits are, pepper is a fruit, and they grind it up because um, it comes from a seed plant, it's a fruit, it contains the seeds. And then um, some of you may be familiar with lotus, so lotus is interesting. Uh, it puts roots all the way down. It, it kind of floats on the surface of the water, but it puts actually roots all the way down to the bottom of the lake. Um, it's interesting. And lotus makes seeds that you can eat. Um, lotus seeds taste a little bit like garbanzo beans. And um, this one is really interesting because in, in this area in the south, we have this tree called the magnolia tree. And when the magnolia tree makes its fruit, it is the weirdest looking thing. It almost looks like a pine cone or something, but these little red seeds uh, are released out and um, it's just the coolest looking thing. Um, so if you ever see a magnolia, um, magnolia puts off a very big white flower that smells really good, really strong. And it has these very glossy dark green leaves. They're very common in, in the south. Anyway, all right, let's get back to why are seeds an important adaptation? I think we've covered this. They maintain dormancy when it gets too dry. So, you know, in an, in an area that has a wet season followed by a dry season, the wet season, you know, things can happen and then the, and then the seeds form and then during the dry season they don't die. So that protects the embryo when it's vulnerable provides food for the embryo, that's the endosperm, is the food for the embryo. And the seed and also the fruit helps with dispersal. All right, so once the seed coat forms, um, the metabolism inside the embryo stops, mm, not 100%, but mostly. And, and then the only way to wake that embryo up is to soak it in water. So you put a dry seed in water and that reconstitutes the cells and they come back. Um, so they have found seeds that are still alive after thousands of years. I think I saw an article that said there was some seeds that were still alive after they estimated that the seeds were about 10,000 years old. That, that's kind of extreme. Most seeds I find that most seeds will stay viable for several years, but occasionally you get these unusual cases where you have something still alive after thousands of years. But they can die. I mean, if you leave them in, if you leave, if you have some seeds and you don't plant them, and you you know, ten years later you try to plant them, sometimes they're not, they're they're gone because they will dry out and die eventually. All right, fruits. Fruits are the ovaries, the carpal surrounding the ovules. So when the seeds are forming from the ovules, the ovary forms into the fruit. Um, not all fruits are things you want to eat. So I know you know what some fruits are, but like this, the shell of a peanut, these little burr structures, there's a seed inside of there, and so the covering is the form from the carpal, then that's the fruit. No, I wouldn't want to eat that. And then this little like fuzzy, cottony white stuff, that's the fruit of this milkweed. And then everything surrounding the seeds, this little fluffy part of a dandelion, that's fruit. But it's not like fruit, in, it's fruit in the scientific sense, not fruit in the slang sense. So all of your major um, Food crops are flowering plants. There's really two groups of flowering plants. We call them the monocots and the dicots. And cot is short for cotyledon, which you remember is the little embryo, the little baby seed leaf in the embryo. 
And so if, there are, if there's only one little seed leaf in the embryo, that's called a monocot. And if there are two little baby seed leaves, that's called a dicot. So it turns out to be a, a way to classify the flowering plants. Um, but any monocots and dicots make up um, our food supply. So I just wanted to show you a close-up of a peanut. This one has not been roasted, so you can still see the embryo is in here. And the embryo is just this little part here. Oops. Okay. And so this part here, there's the meristem here. That's going to be the root. And then this little tip here is the meristem. That's going to go up and be the shoot. And then there are two little baby seed leaves, so that's going to be a dicot. All right, and then all of this part of the peanut that you eat, that's the endosperm. And then the covering over the peanut is the seed coat. So a peanut has all the parts. And then once you roast it, then the embryo gets roasted. And this little, the embryo in the, in the peanuts, interestingly, they usually remove that from when they're making like peanut butter. I did some reading on this. They, um, they remove the embryos, well, I don't know how they do it, but somehow they remove the embryos because, and I've tasted them before, if you separate the embryo out of a peanut, it's a little bit bitter. And they don't want the peanut butter to be bitter, so they remove that as much as they can when they're making peanut butter. So fruit helps to disperse the seeds, all right, and dispersal improves success of the species so that the parent plants don't compete with the offspring plants for resources like sunlight and water. And then usually if we're doing this in class, we have a little game. What's a fruit that's dispersed by ingestion and transportation by birds or other vertebrates? So pretty much any fruit like berries, when the, when the bird eats the berry, it swallows the seed too, and then poops it out somewhere else. And that deposits it um, in a different location, so that's dispersal. So I showed you a fruit that has these little burrs or these little spines on it. So those would be the kind of fruit that would be... Um, dispersed by hitching a ride on the fur of a mammal. Like if you've ever had a dog that goes through a field, sometimes when they come out the other side, they have these little burrs on their fur. And in the wild, if that was like a wolf, that, that animal would then lay down and try to pull those off and then just leave them. And so it, it disperses the seed that's on the inside of that. Um, carrying something off and burying it, I would say like... Um, acorns. You know, a, um, a squirrel will carry off an acorn and then bury it somewhere. So that's dispersal. Blowing in the wind, that could be that dandelion. Floating or drifting on water, coconuts. So there's a lot of different ways that fruits help to disperse um, the embryos that are inside of them. Now plants have evolved, some plants have evolved defenses. Spines and thorns are good examples of defensive. You also have some plants that have poisons, poisonous materials, so you know if you eat it you die. Um, so those are those chemicals are, are plant defenses. Um, but plants generally like they don't want to get like the main part of the plant, the stem, the roots, um, the leaves, they, they sometimes get eaten up by insects and such, and so some plants have evolved these defenses. I'd say they're pretty effective, but not all plants have them. What's interesting about plants is that they co-evolved with insects. There's about 250,000 different species of, of angiosperms. And there's about the same number of species of just beetles. Now, uh, uh, in terms of insects in general, about a million species of insects. So 250,000 species of flowering plants, a million species of arthropods. 
that both groups have been extremely successful and have diversified because they co-evolved. They help each other through evolution become successful. Um, what does a plant provide to an insect? Food. The insect eats some of the pollen. It drinks some of the nectar, which is a little bit of sugary liquid. And then it accidentally carries the pollen to another plant. And so the, the insects serve dispersal of the pollen and the plant helps the insect get the food it needs. So that's been a very strong relationship throughout the history of the angiosperms and the insects. And what are the products of seed plants? The only thing that you really need to focus on is food. There's a lot of things on here, but food. Food. Maybe wood, but food. So if I ask you what's the most important economic um, product that comes from the seed plants, you really need to focus on the food. There's other things, sure. All right, and that wraps us up for chapter 26.